We've been waiting for it. They've been waiting for it. Players have been waiting for it. <laughs> Look at those kids. That's oh, awesome. Floss on them. Get them, baby. Get them. Oh! Western Conference Finals. What the hell is that? On, that's called tie-dye, isn't it? Well, no, that means he watched the different colors together. Yeah, Chris messed Paul's, up an outfit. Chris Paul's first appearance in the Conference Finals. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, what is that? James Harden <laughs> and Gladys Knight and the Pips. I'll tell you this. Jimmy G. That's PJ, PJ Tucker, but he has never played Matador defense. Come on. Oh, sure. oh, I like that. Kitty. Wearing that outfit, you better score 30. Yeah, I'm just yeah. letting you know right now. Oh, stop <laughs> Steph Curry. <laughs> Ready to start a series for the first time in this postseason. And Kevin Durant. He and the Warriors looking for back-to-back -back titles. Golden State looking to make it three in the last four years. The last step before the finals. The Houston Rockets and the WCF here on TNT. Welcome, everybody. TNT NBA tip-off is presented by Auto Trader. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley. Woo! Such a pleasure to be here to take the show on the road. We've been waiting for this, America. You're all right. Year, all Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Hey, guys, you want to know something, buddy? What's that? What? You guys have been out a little longer than me, but I've been out seven years. I was so hyped about this, I actually thought I was playing for a moment. I really did. Well, trust me, I, I saw know. you play your last couple of years. It's been over for a long time. Chuck, um, Google me, Chuck. Google, Google, Google me. me. Here we go again. <laughs> hey, let me let me throw something at you because these two teams started the year. Our first night uh, back in October, these two teams playing at Golden State. That early week, I think I can say safely that for you two, you weren't completely sold on this Chris Paul to Houston idea. Here's uh, from week one. Chris Paul is a great player, but he's not a standing three shooter. James Harden had, he gonna play the way he plays. And James Harden's not gonna stand out there and watch Chris Paul orchestrate, orchestrate the offense. In this offense, and this don't way, fit. it just doesn't fit well. Now, I'm not saying he, it can fit well if he changes his game and all of a sudden do things that we probably don't know he can do. Right. But the Chris Paul that we've seen over these years is not a player that fits in easily in the way they play. So what do you assess what you saw from Paul and Harden together for a team that had the best record in the NBA? Well, he, he's added some things that we didn't typically see him do in, in Los Angeles or New Orleans. For that matter, you know, he became a better three-point shooter. Uh, and been, but then also, credit Mike D'Antoni for creating the opportunities for him off the dribble as well. Because he is really off the dribble. But who had probably hurt more than anyone is Eric Gordon. So he kind of took the role that the sixth man of the year had last year of having that ball in his hand, being able to create things. But... Chris Paul has been better at it his career, so they gave the ball and gave that opportunities that he had. And I'll be honest with you, all they do is alternate who plays one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, you watched the last couple of games we had, Chris Paul was the one go one one one-on-one, -on -one, doing what James Harden does. To me, they just alternate. Uh, do I think it's going to work against the war Warriors? I'm not sure. But they have a, they just switch up. I mean, so like I say, it's been fun. It's been interesting to watch. I mean, half the games we saw him is James Harden go one on five, make a play. The last couple of games, it's been Chris Paul going one on five, make a play. You know, when, when when Chris Paul first came into the league, he was a traditional point guard. So you know, all of us assume that you know playing this style of basketball, he wouldn't adapt to it. But he's definitely adapt very well. But both of you guys make great points. You know, they're just trading. You know who. Who takes turns? Uh, will it work against the Warriors? If they're hitting shots, it definitely work. Uh, you know they're playing well. This is you know a big moment for Chris Paul. Everybody's been waiting for this. It's here. They, you know, Chuck's gonna say it, but I'm gonna say it before him. This is a must win in Game One for Chuck, Houston. Er, Ernie, I, they gotta win this game tonight. I, period. I, I said it. I, I've never said it before until Toronto. They had to win Game One against Cleveland or they at home. At home. Listen, <laughs> I'm going to say it again. This is a must win for the Rockets from a psychological standpoint. But you talk about uh, Chris Paul and James Harden. I'm not worried about them from an offensive standpoint. I'm worried about them from a defensive standpoint. Because when they go one-on-one, -on -one, man, they use up a lot of energy. A lot of energy. But now they got on the other end, they got to guard Clay and Steph. 
And Clay never stops moving, never stops moving. Then I know somebody going to say at home, says, well, they could probably going to put Ariza, Gordon, those other guys. That don't work trying to catch up with guys in transition. If you make a mistake against Clay and Steph in transition, it's going to be a bad ending. More discussion still to come. Houston 67 and 15, best record in the NBA, which means Golden State for the first time during this great run will open a series on the road. We get more on that from David Aldridge, who is working the sidelines tonight. DA. Well, EJ, as you mentioned, it's been a long time since the Warriors opened a playoff series on the road, but that is the residue of a regular season in which they were, frankly, born most of the time and also then got injured toward the end of the regular season. So they kind of seed home court to the Rockets in case each team got to this spot. So now they're here. But Kevin Durant told me yesterday that being on the road is not as big a deal for this group as you may think. I think everybody on this team has at one point started the series off on the road. So um, we know what that's like. We know what the you know game ones are about. It's everybody against you guys out there. So, uh, but it brings you together as a team. It makes you uh, makes you you know feel like you can play in any gym, any atmosphere, and still be yourself if you play well. So. It's a cool feeling. So far in the playoffs, EJ, they've gotten the breakthrough wins they needed, both in San Antonio and in New Orleans on the road. So this is not going to be an intimidating atmosphere for them. They respect the Rockets. They know the Rockets have had a great season. Draymond Green told me this morning, I'm tired of talking. I've been talking for five days. It's time to play. And it's time to play, EJ. DA, thank you very much. Steve Kerr says... Winning game one of a series on the road can change the tone of a series. He speaks from experience from that Oklahoma City series a couple of years ago in which Golden State had to come from behind to win it. What, what do you want to make, what point do you want to make about uh, what D.A. was saying? Ernie, I think the Rockets, you, you have to forget about home court. you got to win four games. When I played for the Suns the first year I got traded there, I said, you know what, if we get the home court, we're going to win the championship. I remember telling Paul Westfall and Kyle Simmons that we come out the first game, the Lakers punch us in the mouth. We lose the first two games at home. Then we go to L.A. and win two and win the series. Next series, we lose a game at home. Next series, we lose a game at home. Lost the first two games to the Bulls when they beat us. You can't, you can't assume just playing at home is going to be the difference. You got to play. Well, yes, you do have to play. But however, if you're at home, you're a little bit more comfortable. We've always stated that, that the others play well at home. You're right. They got to come out and play. You just can't come out lax and days ago like Houston, you know, has you know, known to do before. You got to come out and play. But but home court advantage, psychologically, is it, good if you, you use it to your advantage. Well, I've been blessed, Ernie, to be on a team that was a six seed and never had home court advantage the whole playoff and won a championship. So the mindset of playing on the road or playing on home doesn't phase me mentally, it, doesn't, it wouldn't phase me mentally or the guys that I suited up with. I think the one thing that is different in this series that Houston is going to have to adjust to again. Not saying they can't, but if they don't, they will lose easily. When they run a pick and roll with Quint uh, Capella, typically everyone has been switching. And then James Harden and Chris Ball have been making people do dances and doing spins and, and all of those things. But now when they play that Hampton Five lineup and they put Draymond Green at the five and Kevin Durant at the four, and you want to pick and roll with Capella, you have Kevin Durant or Draymond Green guarding you on the perimeter. They're guards by nature. Right. They just happen to be big. So they can defend the, both of those guys much more easily than they would have ever seen. And we talk about offense a lot, but I think it's defensively where Golden State poses the biggest problem. Let's go look at the uh, the tail of the tape uh, between these two teams in a, in a handful of categories. And you know they can both score like crazy. Uh, as far as the playoff field goes, Golden State third in pace and Houston ninth. Golden State first shooting from mid-range in attempts. That's what Houston does not do. They shoot three balls, and they've shot more than 100 more than Golden State has in these playoffs. And you see the uh, that you assist did. percentage. That jumps off the board to me, Ernie. 70% of Golden State's buckets are assisted. Uh, see, that, that, when I look at all those stats, the number one thing on that thing would be the assist. Golden State, excuse me, the Rockets are not going to win this series with Chris Paul and James Harden playing one-on-one. -on -one dribbling for 20 seconds, making a shot. That's what, a, 
I, I understand, but what if they have phenomenal series? Like Harden averaging 40, well, Harden averaging 25, Well, then they, if they average 40, let's say let's hypothetically, uh, James averaged 40 and Chris averaged 30. Uh, the Rocket, the, the Warriors going to beat them 110 to 70. Uh, they they going to have to get, they going to have to get, can he say his name? Eric Gordon, Trevor Ariza, P.J. Tucker, those guys. I, I'm curious how they're going to play that Hampton five against Capella because he still can get a lot of offensive rebounds and a lot of lobs. That's going to be an interesting matchup. But if those guys don't get other guys involved, they can't score enough just those two players, in my opinion. And, and Capella is mobile enough to go up and down the floor if Golden State does go with the Hamptons five line. Yeah, I, the one thing about the NBA right now is that you don't always have to be able to shoot the three, but you damn well better be able to defend it. If you can't defend it, you can't play. So if you can't shoot it, you better be able to defend it. And he can defend it through. Well, this is but the on guy, the other Sha hand. Shaq, me and Shaq are going over Capella because I think Capella is the most valuable player in this series. Uh, most important player. Most important yes. player because, number one, the way he plays defense, but the way he can rebound on offensive defense and get those lobs, to me, if he plays great, the Rockets got a chance of winning this series. 15 Not blocks. 15 blocks and seven steals the last three games for Clint Capella. You, you know, I think a lot of coaches, you know, make the mistake that when other teams go to small lineups, they defer to playing small. He has to still play big. You got to roll to the basket. You got to get the offensive rebounds. You got to get the putbacks. You got to get the lob. You know, don't just, you know, try to say, oh, I got to defend, I got to defend. But guess what? They also got to defend you also. Without question, but we make a lot of fun of them at times. But JaVale McGee can do exactly what Capella does. Like, and he well, does so that. So can but short Kevon Looney. Kevon Looney, no, you know, no, he, no, can't no, no, he can't do what JaVale McGee but he, does. He could do, in terms of offensively, he could score, he catches and finishes. So I don't know how much of an advantage he's going to have. I'm, I'm really interested yeah, but the to good see thing about how much advantage need, Capella has in this series. We need to go to break. But there's, there's plenty no, to talk about. We don't want to see about. any more commercials. <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's great importance in the, uh, in the commercials <laughs> for us. Shaq looks like the world's largest picnic blanket. Yeah, tell your mom and I have my sandwiches ready, too. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Don't cry, Shaq. It ain't that bad. Hey, come on, man. You hurt your feelings? <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, I did not. Uh, we didn't like the tweet, but we did like that. I like the tweet. Uh, Raymond Green. There's Clint Capella. Rockets. Warriors getting ready. Top of the hour.